So the designers submitted their final submissions on December 9th. They went on public display and were submitted to the jury in a public meeting on January 6th. Uh, the jury convened on January 7th and reached a unanimous first ballot decision on the design that they would recommend to the commission. The jury's report and recommendation was delivered to the commission last week, and this morning the commission adopted the jury's recommendation by an 8-to-1 vote. And with that, I'm pleased to announce that the World War I Centennial Commission has selected as the National World War I Memorial Design Concept the submission by Joseph Weishar, working with the sculptor Saban Howard. Not quite yet. Well, let's go ahead. Joe is 25 years old and a 2013 graduate of the School of Architecture at the University of Arkansas. The nature of the architectural licensing process, which takes several years, is such that Joe is not yet a licensed architect. And his selection validates the Commission's decision to open this competition to all comers, regardless of professional certification. As the project goes forward, Joe will team with GWWO Architects, an architecture firm based in Baltimore that has long experience with public and cultural projects including rehabilitation of, of Arlington House at Arlington National Cemetery, as well as the new visitor center at Mount Vernon. Saban Howard of New York is an artist with 30 years of experience and is considered one of the country's leading classical sculptors. His works have been shown in more than 50 shows nationally and internationally. He has worked with the late renowned architect Michael Graves. And the New York Times said of him, quote, when viewing his works, visitors may be reminded of the time when Donatello and Rodin walked the earth. It's the kind of praise I'd like to get someday. <laughs> so Joe's design reconfigures Pershing Park into three distinct spaces, each of which responds in different ways to the challenge for the site to serve as both a memorial and an urban park. To the western side, an upper lawn bordered by maple trees with a freestanding sculpture in the round in the middle of the lawn uh, will create a simple contained space reminiscent of the sunken plaza and the current park design that will be shielded from the surrounding city while at the same time open to it and that will create an enclave with the potential for both quiet contemplation and act active recreation. Below the upper courtyard to the east and opening, to, opening east to Freedom Plaza is a more urban plaza. The existing Pershing Memorial will remain here but the centerpiece of this space will be a large bronze sculptural relief uh, sculptural work executed in bas relief, and here too the design will accommodate those who come to see the site as come to the site to see the memorial, or for civic gatherings or other events, as well as those who simply want to have their lunch or enjoy the fresh air. Now I remind you that the sculptural images shown here at this point are simply design suggestions by the sculptor, and they appear here as illustrated image images rather than the sculptural forms that they will ultimately take. These are not necessarily the themes or the images that the memorial will ultimately depict, which the commission will develop with the designers and others in months to come. And then finally, along the northern edge, along Pennsylvania Avenue, across from the Willard, uh, along one of the two sloping walls and walkways that connect the lower and upper portions of the site, the design will facilitate additional park enjoyment by hotel guests and office workers in relation to the restaurants, cafes, and shops across the street. So with this simple, elegant design, Mr. Weishar and Mr. Howard have met the various design challenges that I framed a moment ago. First, they've created a strong memorial center to the park, composed of two distinct elements that can present their own different commemorative themes. It's done so in a classical sculptural style that would have been recognizable in the, in the era of the war, yet will also stand up over time and will also be recognizable 100 years from now. It's placed that design in a contemporary landscape design that is consistent with the design principles for public spaces along Pennsylvania Avenue. It creates a variety of open spaces, both paved and, 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 and green, uh, that will accommodate different types of, of, of use as a park. Both the memorial and the park will complement, not compete with, the surrounding iconic buildings and spaces. And by simultaneously opening onto 14th and 15th streets, as well as Pennsylvania Avenue to the north, the site will interact with the surrounding urban context much more effectively than the current park design. At the same time, it does retain significant features of the, of the park's design by operating at two separate, in two separate spaces at, at separate levels uh, with a planar orthogonal design approach while improving accessibility, improving visibility, and solving the main defect of the current park by making it more accessible and more visible from the surrounding and providing more connection to the surrounding streets. 
Now I said this was step one, selection of the design concept. Uh, we anticipate spending the next several months working closely with the designers to refine this design uh, and perhaps look at, at variations on it. Uh, and then ultimately to submit to the Commission of Fine Arts and the National Capital Planning Commission for initial concept review and approval, hopefully in the third quarter of this year.